There's the scenes not long before kickoff now in this big game. Barcelona versus Real Madrid. Guys, Carl, I'm very keen to hear your thoughts on what's going through players' minds, uh, particularly some of the guys who haven't played in this game before. There's quite a few on display. Well, you literally want the game to start. You, I mean, since the moment you, you leave the hotel, you're on the bus, you're already that almost hour, hour and a half before the match, you just want to start. It doesn't go fast enough for you to do so. And, and mentally, you, you keep uh, thinking and, re, and, and going through the things the manager is asking you to do. Uh, there's not need much to say in terms of as, as a manager when you play against, in this case, Madrid or, or Barca, because you know all, all about it. And I think because the hype is so high, as a manager, you have to try to keep it a bit low. As a player, the same. You don't want to get too excited because you want to enjoy this match as much as you can. But you, you're thinking as well that you have to be on your best performance because you have up front the best players in the world. And you also have the whole world watching, right? And, and you've got, it well, feels like the whole world in the stadium. <laughs> but I think, when, well, in my, in my experience, once the referee blows the whistle, that's it. You've forgotten and you forget about everything, whether if it's 100 or 95, I think it's the Camp Nou. Uh, uh, attendances, whether well, if it's 10, you, you're just thinking of what you have to do, you forgot about everything else. So it's, it's more about performing well, having a good game, uh, try your best to obviously to win and not making mistakes. I think that's the, what every player is going through and trying to, to make. Some of the players like, have to affect more the game, maybe like Suarez, uh, Rafinha, in terms of Bale, Isco, they try to think about how, how to make the, the, the game work, how to try to enjoy the, the game, uh, rather than thinking what you, what you uh, mistakes they should do. So it's, it's again, it's, can we start just yet? You know, it's like, the clock doesn't go down uh, quick enough. Do you think that tension is one of the reasons uh, why we've seen so few nil-nil draws in this game in the past, because there's perhaps mistakes made because of the pressure at the back? Yes, probably, because also depends on how the difference point is in the table, you don't want to drop or, or give the advantage to the Real Madrid or Barca. In this case, Madrid will be thinking, yes, uh, we have to be a bit more conservative than maybe we would be if it was the other way around. Barca have the advantage. Uh, I'm not saying Barca is going to be more adventurous. I think it's still you want to protect because you're playing at home and you want to have or keep the advantage or try to increase it. So, yeah, it's, it's also depends on the type of managers. I think in this case, Lopetegui and, and Valverde both are a bit more conservative maybe that in those days uh, Guardiola was or, or maybe Del Bosque was as a manager. Uh, so they go, always want to be a bit more conservative when they try to plan the match. And you can feel that in the, in the, in the speech that the manager does before the match or he does in the hotel. Depending how he says the things, depending on the team formation, he's already giving you the sense that He's gonna, he wants to be a bit more conservative or wants to be more aggressive in the, in the, in the match plan. OK, well, we'll hear more from you guys at half-time. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Meanwhile, let's join our commentators in the stadium, Terry Gibson and Kevin Keating. Europe's biggest stadium stages the world's number one football fixture. The game everyone has been waiting for and the wait is very nearly over. global audience running into the hundreds and hundreds of millions in something like 180 countries and you have a front seat on the home of La Liga for the next three seasons. It's our privilege on 11 Sports to deliver the 177th El Clasico in La Liga. With Barcelona seeking to go back to the top of the table, they welcome a Real Madrid side engulfed in this crisis of proportions which we've not witnessed for many years to put in place just why head coach Julian Lopetegui is hanging on to his job by the flimsiest of threads. He's overseen the club's worst start to a La Liga season for 17 years and their goals tally of 13 is the lowest at this stage since 2004. No win in four league games for Real Madrid, three of those defeats. They failed to get three points today. It will equal the club's worst run without a league win for 19 years. And remember back to last season, 73 successive games they completed. Scoring, that was a new club record. They've suffered one of their worst goal-scoring droughts recently, 481 minutes till Marcelo scored in the home defeat against Levante. Four games this season, they have failed to score, but there is a ray of hope.
no clean sheet for Barcelona since August. Well, this is a familiar sight, Terry Gibson in the tunnel there. We see the players from the two teams, ex-international teammates in the shape of Gerard Piquet and Lucas Vasquez there. We often see it as a lot of camaraderie and friendship before the match gets underway, but we know once it starts, boy, is it feisty. Six red cards in the last eight classical. Yeah, it's not as bad as it once was uh, in the recent past, but I think that the stakes are huge. The game here last season, the title was already won by Barcelona and both teams were at it, full belt, and I expect exactly the same today. Well, let's just pause for a moment and sample this atmosphere. It is sensational at the camp now. Barcelona's famous club anthem ringing around the camp now. And it's a tradition for a mosaic to appear at uh, every Clásico, and this one reads, We colour football. And the claret and blue colours of Barcelona matched with the colours of Catalonia at either end of this Europe's biggest stadium capacity of almost 100,000 and like everyone we are fascinated to see how this particular Classico pans out let's take a check on the two lineups then Barcelona are unchanged from the 11 that took to the field in that impressive Champions League win here in midweek against Internazionale of Milan so it means Rafinha one of the homegrown players gets the start, effectively the replacement for Messi, took his chance in midweek, scored a goal, generally played very well, and there's no question that Barcelona had the stronger substitutes bench today. The departure of Cristiano Ronaldo, just part of a gradual thinning of the Real Madrid squad over the last couple of years or so. The respective captains know each other very well, of course. Sergio Ramos. Sergio Busquets. For Sergio Ramos, his 39th Clásico appearance, five red cards in that time, so important he keeps his discipline. Real Madrid, two changes from the Champions League starting 11 in midweek, the win over Victoria Pilsen, Thibaut Quarta returns in goal for Keylor Navas, Rafa Varane is restored to the centre of defence, Nacho switches to right back, Lucas Vasquez drops out. Just looking at that substitutes bench, it's certainly weaker than we've seen in recent times for Real Madrid. It wasn't that long ago that, that we were talking about them having the deeper squad in Europe. Well, it's the first Clásico where the VAR system is in operation. I'm heading that up today, Alejandro Hernández Hernández, so good at that job they named him twice. But certainly I've talked about the red cards that have been peppering this fixture in recent times, calls for a strong refereeing performance. Jose Maria Sanchez Martinez has the call. The last time Messi missed multiple matches, Luis Suarez stepped up with nine goals in nine games. Neymar at the time, 11 goals in nine games. No one has scored more Clásico goals since Luis Suarez made his debut for Barcelona in the 2014-15 season, he scored six Clásico goals since that debut but nobody has scored more Clásico goals on the pitch at the start today than Karim Benzema, is this the stage he finally silences many of his critics who feel he doesn't score enough goals I think he feels, Terry, he doesn't score enough goals, and for him and Bale who hasn't scored for a month absolutely crucial for Real Madrid that they're on their game and right at it today. It certainly is a game for, for big players to step up, and they will want to, to step up in the absence of Messi for Barcelona and in this present predicament that Real Madrid find them in, themselves in. It's important that their big players stand up, and of course, we hope for a classic go to be at its best. Those superstars need to be, we hope, firing on all cylinders. Well, there hasn't been a goalless draw since 2002. 
no one expecting a nil-nil stalemate here. Here's Ramos, now Marcelo, fit after limping off against Victoria Pilsen in midweek, offside against Benzema, not by much, and certainly got away from uh, PK there. Certainly a risky tactic from, from Barcelona, an awful lot of pressure on the ball in terms of someone closing down Isco. Benzema could have actually held his run a touch there and, and made sure that he was in a, an onside position and threw on goal. Here's one of the Classico debutants, Clement Longley. Early ball seeks out Coutinho into really good space here, Philip Coutinho. It's a very heavy cross. So unlike the Brazilian when he gets into that position. Yeah, an unusual for Barcelona player to actually elevate the cross, isn't it? When there was a couple of options for him to almost pick out a pass in the penalty area. But quite significant how easy Barcelona found their way into that position. And how long have we known it's a strength for Barcelona's attacking down the left flank? It's amazing that Real Madrid almost looked as if they were caught out by surprise. It's the versatile Nacho who's playing at right back today. Could probably argue a strong case that he's been the most consistent of the Real Madrid defenders over recent months. First to play as a centre back. And the first choice central pairing is back in situ again for Real Madrid in the shape of Varane and Ramos. No Danny Carvajal for Real Madrid, he's injured at the moment. Here's Pique. Spears that. Looking for Jordi Alba, who's comfortable defending there. Gareth Bale, who is back in the right back berth. It's an important role, isn't it, for Gareth Bale? We, we know about his attacking ability and the adventure he wants to show in an attacking sense, but you do feel that he's going to have to do some work defensively to help out Nacho. He's also interested in the starting position of Isco, who whether it's going to be a 4-4-2 from Real Madrid, but I think it's le leaning itself to be in Isco playing as part of that front three. Bal on the right, Isco on the left, the Benza in the middle, and the usual three in midfield. So it's 3v3 in the centre midfield. It's going to be an interesting encounter between the two teams in that part of the pitch. Referee in Real to do the free kick. He also had a strong word there with Jordi Alba, who was protesting. Well, in so many past seasons, the start that Real Madrid have made would have put them already out of the title race, but this hasn't been any ordinary start to La Liga. It's one that uh, Terry and I can barely remember in the many, many years that we've both been covering this magnificent league. Maybe we're going to get another upset today. Expect the unexpected. Certainly would be if Real Madrid win. Barcelona have been dominant over the last 20 Clasicos, winning 12 of them, losing only four. And coming under pressure here now. It's an easy pick out for Courtois. There's a couple of good crossing opportunities for. But Coutinho, that had been wasted. One of the few players that wasn't at his best against Inter Milan midweek in the Champions League. First transgression, I suspect it won't be the last from Ramos. <laughs> <laughs> to say his fan club around here is small is underestimating it, it's non existent. Here's Artur, who's been so impressive in his short time at the camp now. Carlos Puyol was saying in the week that everybody should lay off making the comparisons with Xavi, but we all like to do that, don't we? And it's understandable why so many of us have been likening to Xavi for the way he plays, very similar in style, very rarely gives the ball away. And for a player into a step up in class in terms of his league status at the age of 22, he has been mightily impressive. 
He certainly has, and we saw Real Madrid there pressing in the attacking half. Lippich, Isco, Bell, Benzema all showing good enthusiasm to close down, and then it almost looks as if Barcelona were happy for them to do that, then try and get a decent pass into Coutinho in the, the attacking third of the pitch. I think you can understand what Puyol's saying about Artur take pressure off him if he was just allowed to develop on his own. Sergio Roberto was well forward there. Really take it on. PK goes back to Ter Stegen. He was magnificent in the last league game against Sevilla here. What a wonderful game that was. Barcelona winning it 4-2, but, but for Ter Stegen, Sevilla would have scored four on the day. World-class performance in that second half. And the German really calls for him to start getting a place in the national team ahead of Manuel Neuer. Here's Isco. Gross to Isco again and feel to Casemiro. Marcelo. Tidy from Real Madrid. Nice and sharp, wasn't it? Isco, Isco the instigator of what? It was about seven or eight passes, one and two touch play. Here's Gareth Bale. Only Benzema to hit, and he's found him. He had to take it first time. But Gareth Bale did very well to pick out Benzema, it was his only target. He certainly does. He breaks in behind the defence, behind the right back position. Benzema does well, just holds his position. When the boys slightly drag back behind the, the Barcelona defenders, Benzema just can't get the, the attempt on target. Actually, perhaps he, he's one of those where he should have actually done better there. Don't forget the 11 Sports Twitter address. Let us know where you were enjoying this Classico on 11 Sports and also what you make of the game. It's been a relatively cautious game so far no chances really to speak of just that half chance for Benzema a moment or two ago at 11 sports underscore UK is the 11 sports Twitter address at 11 sports underscore UK I'd love to hear from it Busquets and now Jordi Alba chance to measure his cross trying to play it short into Coutinho well, we know Jordi Alba's looking for him when he gets in that position, but um, unfortunately for Barcelona, he's not there today, is he? The partnership he's developed with Messi over the, the last few seasons. And today he's got to find another solution. 26 goals, a record haul of goals in Clásicos for Leo Messi in 38 appearances. His absence today breaks a run of 35 successive appearances in Clásicos. We know he doesn't get injured too much. That broken arm will keep him out for a minimum of six games. Real Madrid have to show up today, have to show they've got the right mental attitude, the characteristics needed, the personality to emerge from this slump talent we know is there but it requires more than just talent alone attitude has to be spot on I think they'll be pretty satisfied with the opening 10 minutes or so here it's fair to say Lopetegui hasn't lost the dressing room several players have come out in support of the coach and it's unfair to lay all of Real Madrid's problems at the coach's feet. He's not culpable for everything. The players have to take their share of the responsibility. Now an excellently timed run. Great control as well from Jordi Alba. Coutinho! Barcelona strike where we fully expected them to strike. Those runs from Jordi Alba down in behind the right back position. And this time, the cross from Jordi Alba, perfectly into the stride of Philippe Coutinho. And the Brazilian, in only his second Clásico appearance, gets his first goal against Real Madrid. And how easy is this? 
one ball in behind. They're threatened on the, already on three or four occasions to get Jordi Alba in that type of position. On this occasion, he does exactly the right thing. Good movement. Luis Suarez attacks the near post, takes defenders away from him, and he just cuts it back into the path of Philippe Coutinho. It's not an easy chance, it's rather easy, but I've seen the mist in a Classico. First 10 minutes, he rolls it home, just tucks it away safely in the corner to give Barcelona the lead. The pressure on Real Madrid in the build-up has been enormous. It's just been added to now with that goal from Coutinho. But it's so key, isn't it, the start of the game. But with Real Madrid in the, the current run of form, it's one point from the last four league games that he, it was so important they got off to a good solid start. That would have been getting to half time with a clean sheet at the very least. With Barcelona going ahead, we're talking about a team that are champions, Real Madrid, in terms of the personality of their players, World Cup winners, Champions League winners. And I thought if they got off to a good start today, they could really test Barcelona. Here's Suarez, Coutinho. Loves these angles. Just enough white shirts there for Real Madrid. Important that they grouped up to close out that shot from Coutinho. The next five, ten minutes, vital for Real Madrid. Here's Modric. And now Bale. Took it on early, trying to catch out Ter Stegen, but it was straight down the goalkeeper's throat from Gareth Bale. It's the nature of the game, isn't it? Lots of possession for Barcelona. And every now and then, Real Madrid threatened on the break. Barcelona had been guilty this season, of giving away more chances than they normally would, conceding more goals. And there is still a threat there from Real Madrid. But clearly, at the moment, Barcelona by far the better of the two teams. And no surprise, they scored from an attack down the left flank. I'm struggling to think of a better fullback in the world than Jordi Alba at the moment, and he can't get into his national team squad because of a fallout with the current boss, Luis Enrique, in his time here as the head coach, of course, of Barcelona. They had a disagreement. It doesn't look as though Luis Enrique has forgiven that. And Jordi Alba has been sitting out recent international call-ups. Amazing, really. Yeah, no, uh, it's uh, hard to imagine. And he's, he's still at an age where he should be still playing international football. 29 years old. Nowhere near, be looking like a player that needs to retire from the international game. Barcelona slipping into an ominous groove here. Rafinha to Sergio Roberto. Coutinho's there. Looks a little bit of support at the moment. Now has an easy pass for Alba. Rakitic. Piquet. Rakitic, Artur, Coutinho, Piquet to Sergio Roberto, Fini running it short. Barcelona looking very confident in possession. A lovely pass from Artur. Coutinho working that right back berth again. It needed Bale back there to clear on this occasion. And there's Benzema. Cruz, heavy touch. Yeah, I can see an issue with Real Madrid with Nacho. He's looking very much today like a, a centre back playing right back, and he's tucking himself right close to Rafael Varane, and he's neglecting that side. He doesn't want to be up against Coutinho and Jordi Alba, and well, Gareth Bale is being forced at times to try and get back and help Nacho, but there's so much space there for, for Jordi Alba to run into. Far too much space for a, a player of his quality. Oh, that just reared up a little bit on Ter Stegen. Couldn't 
hold on to it first time. Shot coming in from Marcelo. Just have to be a little watchful here, the German. It's a right-footed attempt from the left-back of Real Madrid, and I'm sure Lopetegui is going to need him to get into that. The attacking half of the pitch much more frequent than we've seen so far in the opening period of the game. Well, there has been some suggestions that even if Lopetegui were to win today, that he wouldn't hold on to his job. Such has been the disappointing start to the season. Haven't really found an identity yet under him, Terry, because I think when he came in, we know his style with the national team, all about possession, lots of passing, dictating matches via that. But what we saw a lot from what was good about Real Madrid was their counter-attacking play and individual shining in the case of Bale and Ronaldo when he was wearing the famous white shirt. And it's almost as if the players have said, no, we, we want to play as we played under Zidane. We don't want a lot of passing and possession football. How do you read it? Well, the, the, the only four games of the season where they were playing really well, everybody was talking about and raving about this new Real Madrid style. I think they had more passes in one of those early games than they've ever had in the history of La Liga. More than any of the Barcelona have achieved. I think it was a winning in Girona. And I'm, I'm just I'm really surprised how quick it's all changed. Where at the moment I would say they look like the old Real Madrid in terms of their style of play, very little possession, get the ball forward quickly into space for Bell, Benzema, and people like that to to try and make the most of. But clearly, Love to take it to start the season wanted his team to be more possession based. But you need confidence to do that. The players of this stature will clearly have their say, won't they? And they will be listened to by any coach, Lopetegui included. But they trail to that goal from Philippe Coutinho, set up by this man on the ball, Jordi Alba. Just a reminder, Barcelona have not kept a clean sheet since August. Remember, until that win against Sevilla, they've been on a poor run of form themselves in La Liga. No team in this extraordinary start to the campaign have been consistent all the way through. Here's Rafinha, just held up by Ramos. Needs to be careful with that. And it's played to Artur! Good save from Courtois. Ramos passing across his own age in Yarbox. Barcelona still trying to win the ball back, continue that little spell of pressure. Courtois, people have been a little bit critical of him in this recent run of results for Real Madrid. And Nacho just flicks the ball away at his strength to the path of almost an Iniesta. Artur gets out of his feet, doesn't particularly get it in towards the top corner and good save from Courtois, but one you would expect the big Belgian goalkeeper to be making always looked like that was going to be a risky pass from Ramos. PK and the pressure here from Bale. The referee says get up to Gareth Bale, but the attack stays alive here. Strongly, the referee, a brief word with the Brazilian. One or two it will be Barcelona's. Chasty tackles, but terrible defending from PK here. Complacent defending, forced into the foul against Gareth Bell, clear foul. You do wonder there, I know the referee tried to allow the advantage, but that was a, an advantageous position for Real Madrid to have a set piece just outside the penalty area. But it was complacent from, P from PK. It has been one of the issues with his defending for Barcelona this season. And he gets in front of Gareth Bell now. He's just got clearer. Don't take a touch and then try and work your way out. Defend certain situations. You have to deal with it properly. Here's Rafinha. Straight pass. Picked up here by Isco. feeling certainly when Ronaldo walked out of the door at the Bernabeu was that it wasn't just Benzema and Bale who were going to have to accept the responsibility to deliver the goals but players like Isco and Asensio nobody really has stepped up 
Benzema did in the early part of the season. In fact, it was his best start to a Real Madrid season ever when he got five quick goals, but they've dried up since. Bale hasn't scored for a month. Varane comfortably back to Courtois. Of course, one of the Classico debutants today. After his move from Chelsea. Barcelona with a win would open up the gap on Real Madrid to seven points and go back to the top of the table. Currently, Atletico Madrid lead the way after their 2 0 home win on Saturday over Real Sociedad. Goals from Diego Godin and Felipe Luis with his right foot. As a yeah, I collector's think item. We talk about everything around the Classico, and there's so much to talk, so much to discuss. But I think the significant is the issue is the fact of this season in the Liga. Barcelona win, they go seven points clear, and, that, that, and normally that is. It's tough going for either Real Madrid or Barcelona to close that gap. And if Real Madrid do come from behind, get the win, then it's right back on again. And up there battling it out with Alaves and Espanyol and <laughs> yeah, just just by the lid. Drink that in for a minute. Title contenders early season: Espanyol, Alaves, by the lid, and the top six. <laughs> it's great to see, frankly. Fabulous for the league. been a bad response from Real Madrid just after they conceded the goal from Coutinho there was another chance for Barcelona to create an opening for the second goal quite quickly since then Real Madrid have recovered we're seeing more white shirts in the attacking half of the pitch now here's Artur just for once nothing to his left it's a round of applause for maintaining that possession he went off Late on in the Champions League win over Internazionale of Milan in midweek to a standing ovation, Artur. So they brought goosebumps on his goosebumps as he left the field. Stuff of dreams, the Brazilian was describing it as. This is nice from Sergio Roberto, receives from Suarez, but it's a good intervention from Varane. Timely won that for Real Madrid. talk about Barcelona exposing Marcelo in this game but almost exclusively they've been attacking that right back position in this first half Isco Cruz Casemiro now Ramos Gareth Bale takes a tumble, it's a free kick to Real Madrid, we know Bale has the temperament for the big stage, scored uh, goals in Champions League finals, Copa del Rey finals, just think he has to steer clear of those niggling injuries that he picks up from time to time and prove that he can do it on something close to the consistent basis that Ronaldo did. Perfect opportunity now, post Ronaldo, for Bale to really step up. No one's, no one's going to come close <laughs> to re replicating what, what Ronaldo no, did. 50 goals it's, a season, it's, it's isn't impossible, it? Impossible, but certainly needs to up their game. See there, the run from Jordi Alba, well timed. The pass was fantastic. He just bides his time there, doesn't he? Takes an extra couple of touches, rolls it back, and cuts in the. The six yard box behind the defenders and a nonchalant finish from Coutinho to make sure he just rolls it past Coutinho, uh, Courtois. Here's Modric, he's good, just unable to move on to that. Roberto made it a little 
awkward, but he still gets his cross away, cleared by uh, Piquet. Now Ramos sits up nicely. That's all he could do really for now is get it on target, but it was routine in the end for Ter Stegen. Certainly set up inviting him to, to take on the attempt. Gets in front of Luis Suarez and chest control and a straightforward save for a goalkeeper who's been in um, incredible form in recent weeks. Marcelo trying to feed that into the channel for Bale. Right idea, just not the accuracy needed. Uh, unlucky because it should have been a better pass. A really good position there. Good run that Gareth Bell made, should have been found. Rafinha. Space again on that left-hand side for Coutinho and now for Jordi Alba. Fed in towards Suarez, takes a tumble, referee says play on. Times seem to stop still for a split second or two there. Everybody holding their breath, offside now Barcelona. But everyone holding their breath, not least the players in white shirts. Who were hoping against hope the referee wasn't going to award a penalty. He didn't. Well, we do, do have VAR in La Liga. It's a risky challenge, isn't it? Suarez is ahead of Varane. In that position, Varane has to do his utmost to make sure he doesn't make any contact. And you know, I think there's consideration there, strong consideration. I do believe the referee is going to go to the VAR system. Well, they are checking I think, it. I think it's a penalty. I'm not saying he's going to give the penalty. In my opinion, the striker gets across the defender and he's knocked over. Brand doesn't make any contact with the ball. I think the key is that he's in front, isn't yeah. he, of Suarez. It was certainly uh, a coming together. Another angle there. He needs to have a look at the monitor pitch side. Well, the angle we're getting there, you can see Suarez is in front. Grant has to do anything but go into the back of Suarez and essentially just knock him over. Well, the sense over this, Terry, now is clearly that Alejandro Hernandez Hernandez thinks that obviously it needs more closer scrutiny from the on pitch referee, but the feeling that they believe this is a penalty and it will be the referee's eventual final decision there he is taking a look at what happened <laughs> it's dramatic isn't it and here is his decision penalty Lopetegui lopes back to his seat, shake of the head from the Real Madrid head coach. And after that long deliberation, the first Clasico using the VAR system, Luis Suarez with the chance to make it 2 0. No mistake from the Uruguayan. Seven goals in the Clásico now for Luis Suárez. Who needs Messi? Well, we talked about the big players stepping up, then we in two that we kept mentioning. Coutinho and Suárez for Barcelona. Coutinho with the opening goal. Suárez fell to a penalty, takes responsibility, steps up, and slots it home. And there we see he has the, the urgency to get across for Ren at the near post and Varane has to do more he has to be initially sharper get ahead of Suarez he doesn't then you can't make contact you can't knock over the striker In my opinion the correct decision Suarez makes no mistake gives Barcelona the two goal lead and the perfect position tough time for Real Madrid to be a good penalty as well, didn't it, Courtois, full length, inch perfect from Suarez, and the right man of power, Courtois feels he was close. Well, I think what the referee needed there, 
as we saw was the pit side monitor to deduce who engineered the contact needed a close inspection the referee decided that it was Varan. Thirteen points. Real Madrid had dropped already this season prior to today's Clásico. And staring down the barrel of another defeat. Which would be their fourth in the last five league games. Coutinho could, by the end of the day, get really embarrassing if this continues. Feels half-hearted more from the crowd than players for handball. It's just a corner. And as a coach, you look at Love taking the touch lines, he's not doing anything at all in terms of... The problem has been from minute one, down Barcelona's left flank. And he's, he's not doing anything, he's not asking Gareth Bale to help out, he's not, uh, not, not asking Nacho to perhaps stay in a wider fullback position. Comfortable take in the end for Courtois. It was a big call playing that show at right back as well. We know he's an, an auxiliary defender, he can play right back, left back. Central defence is his best position. And when you spent a decent amount of money that Real Madrid did spend on Adrian Zola for over 30 million euros, for him not to be given a chance when Carver Holt is injured. And you could Adrian Zola's a quicker player as well. And that would have been a, a better fit, I think, today. Despite his lack of experience in playing in the Classico, I certainly think Rodrigo Zola was the right call. You can see here they get into another position so easy on that, that left flank. And could, could Coutinho just finish it off really nicely. It's a calm finish, doesn't go for Bow, slots it away. Well, as you've seen, more football on 11 Sports today, Alaves at home to Villarreal. Alaves having a magnificent season under coach Abelardo. It's a big game in Serie A as well. 11 Sports 2, 7.20 tonight. It's Napoli hosting Roma. Should be a really good game. Eleven Sports already bringing you some fabulous European action, the home of La Liga and Serie A. And you can engage with us via Twitter, 11 Sports, at 11 Sports underscore UK, at 11 Sports underscore UK. As we are absolutely thrilled to bring you the first El Clasico on 11 Sports. Barcelona leading it by two goals to nil, not flattered by their lead. As Terry mentioned, they have been the, the better of the two teams. Taking a grip on midfield with Busquets, and Rakitic and Artur. It's so important that Modric and Kroos still have to put their heads above the parapet in that key area of the field to provide the opportunities for the likes of Benzema and Bale. Isco needs to step up too. Modric Kuge just took a late challenge there but we shouldn't underestimate the pressure these players are under in a fixture of this magnitude I mean, I've heard players in the past say they struggle for breath struggle to almost feeling like they're not breathing that, that, that it just envelops them and we're talking about top players here. and you talk about top players like Luis Suarez they're taking that penalty it was inch perfect wasn't it the power to get it past Courtois I mean, there was no room for error there from Suarez. Two or three inches closer to Courtois, and he saves it. But big players, it's why they're here, Kevin. It's why they're brought through the system if they've, they've come to, through Barcelona and Real Madrid in that way, or they've been purchased for huge sums of money, big transfer fees. It's a beautiful way to pass, and Coutinho cut off at the pass, importantly by Varane. And again. Uh, duo of Jordi Alba and Coutinho 
absolutely dominating this Clasico up to now. Terry once, uh, or earlier this season, put out a rest in peace message for opposition right backs to try and play against the left sided attacking unit of Barcelona. It's a nightmare position to play in because the, the cuteness, the deafness of pass, the ability to move into space, that innate ability to find space in tight areas. They've clearly earmarked that position and it's paying dividends. Once again, here we go. Look at the room here for Jordi Alba. It's getting embarrassing for Real Madrid. Suarez wasn't too far away from getting in touch on that. It's probably all he needed, and it would be 3 0. It's, it's incredibly naive, isn't it, to see a Real Madrid team coached by the, the former international manager of Spain to allow this to continue in this manner. It's been a slight change. Again, look at the space. No one is within. 15 metres of Jordi Alba. If Rafinha attacks the far post, if they can get another body or two in the penalty area, Barcelona then <laughs> almost certain that would have been another goal. Rakitic there with the with the foul. So okay, your Lopetegui, how do you solve that? Well, he's tried to make a slight change in the fact that he's just swapped about and Isco over. I, I don't see that as an issue. It, it's not going to make an awful amount of difference. So. But this this comes from the fact that. It, it's not a surprise, is it, that Barcelona, oh, suddenly Jordi Alba's surprised everyone by being a, an attacking fullback and with Coutinho playing ahead of him. They haven't planned for that Real Madrid. Absolutely ridiculous. Benzema towards Bale, who was struggling to find the space to get a shot of any velocity off. But, uh, signs of a little build up there between Bale and Benzema. Statement of the obvious. Need saying anyway, Real Madrid cannot afford to ship another before half time. It's a late one by Nacho. And this could be the first yellow card of the game, and it is. Yeah, it's just a, 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 a sign, isn't it, of how tough it's been for Nacho at this time. He's up against Coutinho and does foul him, and I always well, thought that was going to be a yellow card. The referee did try to allow Barcelona the advantage. He needs help. Varane's on that side of the central defence. Varane is struggling at the moment. Gave away a penalty against Levante last week. Amazon fought for the, another goal against Levante. Giving away the penalty today. He's lacking confidence. Yeah, you look at these players. Uh, Varane, of course, a World Cup winner in the summer. Modric, who uh, reached the, the final. Tony Kroos. Neither of those three players have found anywhere near their best form since the summer we have to quickly Real Madrid kicking off today ninth in the table unprecedented going into a Clasico the worst run for 17 years actually they were 15th after nine games back in 2001-2 uh, but you may recall he went on to win the Champions League at the end of that season with that Zidane volley at Hampden Park, which uh, none of us will ever forget. He had a real torrid start to that season. But we are seeing a group of players here who are very, very low on confidence. As well as Barcelona are playing, Real Madrid not showing any signs that they're going to have enough. But there is still a long way to go. Yeah, I, I wouldn't tell it right off Real Madrid. It's 2-0 it's if they get the next goal, then it gives them a boost in confidence. will make things slightly more anxious in this stadium. Pocket the space briefly for Coutinho. Now Busquets, Sergio Roberto. about Barcelona's lack of clean sheets none since August nine teams have conceded fewer goals than Barcelona so far this season 
So many extraordinary stats about this campaign now. They could open up Real Madrid here, but the pass was really lacking from Rafinha. It's an easy pass as well, wasn't it, for him to achieve on his right, on his left foot. Loads of space. It's a chance wasted by Barcelona. Free kick for the foul on Rafinha. to take charge of this set piece the high line from Real Madrid at the moment looking to drop this just beyond the penalty spot would be the ideal place shallow from Rafinha comfortably defended by Benzema Suarez Guided away by Varan. Suarez stronger there than Ramos. Excellent looking cross. Nobody able to feed despite the efforts of Suarez who delivered the cross to get in there. Busquets. Rafinha shots on. And he didn't miss the far angle by much. Now Joel PK going to make his way back. He just can't resist staying up there after a set piece. He's never in a rush to get back. And there's the eventual attempt from Rafinha. Just curls wide at that far post. Suarez with the delivery towards the, the far side of the goal. I think PK's going for goal. No obvious player to knock it down to, but he, he can't generate the power and get it on target. minutes to half time plus any stoppage time to be added on by referee Jose Maria Sanchez Martinez just that one half chance for Benzema a couple of shots from distance which would be comfortable for Testegen for Marcelo and Ramos it's been the sum total of Real Madrid's attacking threat in this opening half Kick here now. In a challenging position. And this would be a very good moment for Real Madrid to get one back. Would be an ideal moment, wouldn't it? To see us go out there. He's and Clement Longley goes across and commits the foul. So Varan and Ramos naturally forward for this. So too Nacho. White shirts outside of the penalty area for anything that might come their way. Tony Cruz will deliver the free kick. Real Madrid desperately needs something here. Ramos has four headed goals in Clásicos. Has to be the key figure in there. And this cue from Isco, and now so many white shirts ahead of the ball if the pass is right. Suarez falling over at an inopportune moment. He had two players screaming for a cross. One of them, Gerard Piquet. It couldn't get any worse there, could it, for Barcelona? That was an, an, an a incredible opportunity. Five players racing forward. Two new ahead. It looks like that's going to be the half time scoreline, but it could actually be more, couldn't it, for Barcelona? A little bit careless in attacking situations on. Three or four occasions. Suarez has certainly led the line well. It's 
it's been an excellent performance from Barcelona in the first half. They've been the sharper team, the more cohesive team, and it could be more than 2-0. Well, that's the end of the first half, a fixture which garners the attention in world football like no other. Luis Suarez from the penalty spot after he was fouled by Rafa Varane. That was the second of Barcelona's two goals, the first stroke turned by Philippe Coutinho after excellent work from Jordi Alba. Half-time in the 177th La Liga Clasico at the Camp Nou. It's Barcelona 2, Real Madrid 0. Second half will be getting underway shortly. Let's join our commentators Terry Gibson and Kevin Keating. Yes, welcome back to the Camp Nou. Just to underline the task that Real Madrid face here. Barcelona unbeaten in 41 league games in this arena, winning 33 of those, their longest such run since February 1977. Two Clásicos that Messi has missed. Barcelona haven't won any of them, but they are well in place to do that. Lucas Vázquez is coming on for Real Madrid at the start of the second half. Rafa Varane is the player that has been replaced, so I think Nacho will be happy to get out of that right back position that has been tested time and time again and hasn't stood up to that test but now it falls on essentially a right winger to fill that right back role now in Lucas Vasquez who actually did play there in midweek in the Champions League win over Victoria Pilsen. Terry Gibson what do you make of that Lopetegui change at half time? I just don't understand it I, I get the fact if Grand's injured you have to make the change Nacho goes and plays centre back off you just think that Varane is playing poorly and you want to make that change, I get that. Vasquez has had a couple of goes at right back and he's a right winger, he's never played right back and it's worked out poorly. 35 million euro right back is, is currently still on the bench from Audrey Zola. So, so it's uh, an interesting change. But what Lopetegui has to do, in case can make the point, these players have to work a lot harder, they have to show a far better attitude. I think we expected that, it hasn't been forthcoming. We certainly don't, uh, at the moment, show the attitude of, of that former Barcelona player. Familiar face of Carlos Puyol, of course. Still not been to the Barbers since we last saw him. And away we go then, Barcelona, you won't be surprised to know, are unchanged from the 11 that took to the field, same 11 that started against Internazionale of Milan in that 2-0 Champions League win here in midweek. Yes, there was that talk about Real Madrid having to work harder collectively, but also play smarter. They were so naive in that first half, it almost beggared belief. Well, he's dropped Casemiro in between Nacho and Ramos. So it's a three-man central defence. Vasquez, therefore, is more suitable to playing as a, a wing-back. Marcelo, likewise on the left side for Real Madrid. Rakitic, well, had it got a touch. I think Rafinha would have been offside anyway, but just for once, Rakitic didn't get hold of it. Scored a couple of cracking volleys already this season. You can see the various triangles there, but it is Casemiro. You can see him playing there in between. Nacho, Ramos still to the left. So it's something drastic. It needed something drastic. Lopetegui is trying to shake things up, get some sort of change. and kickstart his team back into this game against Barcelona and kickstart their season. It's hardly a boost to the confidence as you touched on of Audrey Athola, a natural right back. It cost all that money from Real Sociedad in the summer that he hasn't been called upon. For what would have been his Clasico debut, more experienced figure in uh, Vasquez. So they've spent 35 million euros on him and he's now behind Carvajal, Nacho, Vasquez. Just one of a number of puzzling personnel switches by Real Madrid in recent times.
five of the last six Real Madrid head coaches prior to Lopetegui lost their first Clásico. The only one who didn't was Zinedine Zidane, who won here back in 2016. And Barcelona have been dominating this particular fixture since Pep Guardiola was building that wonderful Real Madrid team ten years ago. And 20 games since. They've won 12, lost only four, winning this one at a canter at the moment. But again, you can see the sharpness there, Luis Suarez. He genuinely believes he's got a chance of sneaking up behind Tony Crows, dispossessing the German midfield player. The three on hand to ward the foul, but again, tenacious play from Luis Suarez in next in the first half. He's been struggling with a a knee problem over the last few weeks. I think the international break helped in that respect. He didn't go away with Uruguay. And he got more treatment on that knee problem. He certainly looks a lot sharper. Played very well against Sevilla in the last league game here at the camp now. Here's Marcelo. So very little of him getting forward. It's a good cross though. More than that, it was an excellent cross and very well defended. By long late. That's the intention, isn't it? To get Marcelo in that type of position. Aim towards Benzema. Bowley's playing alongside Benzema now. It's a very much a 3-5-2. Excellent defending from Clement Longley though. Tony Kroos. Samiro, poor pass that was, here's Suarez, and they can drive this Real Madrid defence with a bit of purpose, Barcelona, but Suarez couldn't get his pass out. Again, that's incredibly wasteful, isn't it, from Barcelona, but it was a straightforward play, it should have been for a player of Suarez's class and standing, Rakitic does work so hard to get in that position, and careless play from Barcelona, but again, a lack of desire from Real Madrid players to get back and help their defenders. Here's Bale, taken on now by Benzema to Vasquez. And towards Isco, it's much better from Real Madrid, Marcelo! Scores for the third successive game, the Brazilian. And Real Madrid are certainly right back into this Clásico. Well, he was drastic with the tactical change at half-time. The idea was to get Marcelo further up the pitch to avoid having him to de have to defend. And they work this again so easy. Isco does well, gets to the byline, cuts it back. Real Madrid players, Gareth Bale almost gets to at the, the near post, deflected by Clement Longley. Marcelo hasn't got an awful lot to aim at. Shows composure, gets the ball under control. To Stegen going to his right, the ball goes to his left, the goalkeeper wrong-footed. Real Madrid, of course, back in this game now. Let's see how much the game can swing on the basis of Suarez doesn't make the most of one attacking opportunity at one end. Within seconds, Real Madrid are down the other end, getting the goal back. And Classico is back on again. Well, you have to say it was a fortunate deflection off Clermont Longley, but Real Madrid probably deserved that little bit of good fortune that it fell kindly for Marcelo, as you said. Terry still had a little bit of work to do and he did that very well indeed. There's our tour. Isco. Cruz. Vasquez protecting that well away from Jordi Alba. The way though by Bale to Rakitic. There was a foul, but the referee plays sensible advantage. Here's Suarez. Try and uh, accept the corner here, which he will get. Yellow card for Gareth Bale. Referee going back to 
punish him for that earlier challenge where the advantage was played. Sees the challenge on even Rexic, he said that challenge is from behind. It's a clear yellow card of Lintz. Slover seeking to extend their advantage to two goals again via this Coutinho corner. Courtois able to gather it in. Looks early here for Isco. Players arriving in one shirt and changing positions really quickly. Benzema just couldn't slot it through there through the tightest of spaces for the supporting Tony Kroos. A spring in the step now of Real Madrid, which we haven't seen up to now after that Marcelo goal. Benzema. Bale. Longley sticking very tight to the Welshman. And there's Rafinha. Suarez. Important that Ramos made that challenge. Pattern of the game has changed, isn't it? It's Barcelona now looking to play counter attacking football, and they're going to get opportunities. Real Madrid, of course, have to commit players into attacking positions. Free kick against Longley. They certainly made up ground to break through on that last attack here. We see the challenge from Longley on Gareth Bell. We see the goal for Real Madrid. Chest control, it's a good finish, he's actually stretching, isn't he? To reach the ball after his control, to try and get it away from the goalkeeper, does really well. Absolutely, at full stretch, yeah. isn't he? Players back on the line. Cruz for the free kick. Free beyond the far post, Real Madrid, poor marking there from Barcelona. Gareth Bale, who got free there, couldn't do much with his cross. Marcelo can, and the header's over. And that was a chance for Ramos. He was offside anyway. Wouldn't have counted. And how often has Sergio Ramos got in positions like that and delivered? Well, they, they look now, Real Madrid, completely different team. And they look like they have a little bit of belief again, don't they? That's all the fans getting anxious and with every good reason because Modric has hit the inside of the post tiny fractions deny Modric and Real Madrid what a turnaround in this Clasico nearly believable after what we saw in the opening 45 worsening a little bit from a lot of rain yesterday in Barcelona it's quite a strong wind as well sunshine is returning to Real Madrid in this second half in the display and there's a sea change from what we saw in the first half and there's a half a chance which is snatched at uncharacteristically by Isco it's incredible, the turnaround in form from, from both sets of players. Real Madrid were all from the first half, Barcelona were really good. Barcelona so far in the second half have been awful, haven't kept the ball. They're not tracking back, they're not organised defensively. Modric should have scored and the game should be 2-2. But isn't that just in keeping with the season we've seen exactly. so far? It has no sense to it whatsoever and we love it for that. Casemiro delighted by the way you could pull up a seat to join us 11 sports privileged to bring you the El Clasico your home of La Liga football in Serie A for the next three seasons as Real Madrid come again and the deflection is kind to Barcelona but again a challenging position bought there by Benzema 
but it almost looks in inevitable now that Real Madrid are going to get the equaliser. Isco's turning on the style. The midfield trio of Real Madrid, Modric, Casemiro, Isco, and Kroos uh, uh, and Isco. Poor marking there from the corner. Nobody reading what was a, a simple short corner there from Real Madrid. Nobody picking up Isco. Option is there again for that, but this time it's going to be delivered long. No, they do take it short again. Once more, there was space for Isco. He's overdone the cross by a considerable margin. You can see it on the faces, can't you? It's a look of dismay from the Barcelona supporters. It's almost like different players in the <laughs> Barcelona colours have come out in this yeah. second half. The midfield trail was so dominant in the first half, weren't they? Getting outplayed now. And it, it's, it's three more than decent players in midfield for Real Madrid now in Isco, Modric and Gros. So this is the level we expect them to be at. And we're talking about world-class talent here whose performances generally don't drop by as much as five, six, seven percent from one moment to another in a game. But we're talking about <laughs> a drop here of... 80, 90 percent in some cases from what we've seen from first half to second half. Extraordinary. What's that to do with? Is it the fact that they're 2 0 up against a team that's struggling badly? It just shows, doesn't it? You just lack a little bit of focus. What can happen? Attitude has to be. 100% all of the time in any given situation, even for these top players. You would expect Barcelona to improve and get back into that groove again. Fancy haven't seen the last of the goals. Here's Alba. Just didn't quite reach. And it'll come back into the path here of Jordi Alba, support from Artur. Matic could have taken that on himself there. I don't think he realised he had the space to gather it in and move forward towards the edge of that penalty area. Here's Rafinha. Busquets. Rakitic. Sergio Roberto in behind. Suarez off the post. Lovely move. From Barcelona, it deserved better. Suarez, those fine margins in evidence again. Both sides hitting the woodwork now in this second half. Boy, it's a delicate balance <laughs> yeah. as to which way this is going <laughs> and, to, and to you switch. See so many weaknesses in, in both teams defensively, isn't there? You could see the Exactly what Barcelona were trying to do. There's Sergio Roberto running in behind. Marcelo doesn't spot the run. Suarez unlucky he doesn't finish it off. Back to improvise. Not an easy finish. It's a patient build up. Titch with the clip over the top, Marcelo sees him. Look at the, the space that opens up. Marcelo is just hoping the ball goes out of play. They're at sixes and sevens at the back round the trip, but they are chasing the game. Suarez with the volley, just get a little touch off of Marcelo, a deflection. Just got strikes the post. slightly ahead of the ball, didn't he? he? Had to just reach for it with his almost with his side of his foot. Suarez. They come Real Madrid again with Isco. No room to get a shot at goal. Here's Marcelo with a bit more space. Isco. Rafinha doesn't want to lose possession there, but he has. And it's a lovely pass from Kroos. He was offside. I don't think the referee has seen it. Yes, he has. Yeah, again, Flags up from the assistant. It's poor play from Rafinha again, though. Isn't it straightforward play? Planning. Classico, get the opportunity, your team are under pressure, 
and you can see he's just leaning offside there. It's good. But good defending again. Last ditch defending from PK. He's furious with Rafinha. But he did exactly the same mistake in the first half. I know Patiki must, must be really thinking now that his team are on the verge of getting back on level terms. It's a great Classico. Anything can happen from here on. Well, it's not as if we haven't seen this defensive frailty from Barcelona this season. We have on several occasions. something like February before they conceded the amount of league goals yep. have conceded already this season. Yep, week 22 they conceded 11 goals last season. Before today's game that was the amount they had already conceded. So it's clear to see, I mean, it's if they win they go top of the league again, but significantly down on the points total that a team normally needs at this stage to be top of the league. Well, we've seen La Liga won with 100 points. And that is with Tostegan playing out of his skin. Yeah. So, so. But regularly in the 90s, we might see significantly less than that. In fact, we almost certainly will if uh, this particular sequence of results have astounded us week upon week in 11 sports coverage of this fantastic league this season. And the Classico not disappointing. It was pretty cautious, I thought, for the first 10 minutes or so to Barcelona really settled and then fully deserved their 2-0 half-time lead but that goal from Marcelo both sides have hit the woodwork and that was close again that was a lovely ball played in and <laughs> Artur seeking out the goal on his Classico debut but it's just a corner it was Jordi Alba joining up in the attack there isn't it yeah. no idea why 2-1 ahead he's playing in the centre forward position well alongside Luis Suarez but it's La Liga <laughs> Artur is there for the short corner but I think Coutinho is designs on finding him eventually Alba Artur Coutinho that's a foul on Rafinha I think the referee has judged it to a, be a genuine attempt for the ball so he's not going to issue a card here just turning into Kroos Subs coming in as we see Marcelo's goal to get back in. A good angle, every angle that we can see it from. God, it's a back for Barcelona, but it is dreadful defending. Good attacking play from Real Madrid. It's made the second half really interesting and exciting. Rakitic, lovely run from Suarez. Casemiro up against Luis Suarez here. Needed an extra man in support came from. Sergio Ramos to close out Suarez. Another Barcelona corner. And they needed to up their game. Started the second half really poorly. Valverde's team. Suarez doing his best, isn't he, to lead the team from the front. He may not have the pace that he once had. But his grit and determination at times he uses brute force. Back into the form that they showed in the first half of the game. Once again, a Coutinho corner, catching practice for Courtois. A good rollout as well. Empty in midfield for a moment here, Barcelona. Isco won't fancy a foot race with Jordi Alba, only one winner in that. But he does earn the throw. Barcelona are going to bring on Nelson Semedo right back shortly. A natural right back. We know Sergio Roberto isn't he? he plays there, he, he performs pretty well there, but he prefers midfield. Interesting to see whether he's pushed forward in midfield yeah. and Semedo sure. comes on at yeah, right back. Pretty sure he will be once in. Probably Rafinha will be the player that he's replaced for, for Barcelona. Yeah. One or two things that haven't quite gone Rafinha's way in the second half. 
probably means he'll get the hook, but we'll see shortly. Here, space now for Lucas Vasquez, three white shirts to hit. Excellent cross, ahead of Sova. What an opportunity for Benzema. Has to score. Well, talks about this run of form for Real Madrid, but they're not scoring goals. They're relying on a, a left back to get their goals, to finish off the chances that come their way. Heavily criticised Karim Benzema. Great work from Vasquez. The wing back system has worked for Real Madrid in the second half. I'm afraid Benzema has to score there. It's not the highest in terms of having to jump really high to reach the ball. He's not stretching. And he should be beaten to Stegen from that distance. Well, it is Rafinha coming off to be replaced by Nelson Semedo. So Semedo will go into his natural right back berth. Sergio Roberto pushed up into his preferred midfield role. <laughs> He'd already gone there, Sergio Roberto. He was already on the halfway line. He, he didn't need telling. And it's a, a regular change, isn't it? Here's Suarez, it's a good pass to Coutinho. We'll have to go it alone for the moment. Philip Coutinho. Crosses back there to sweep it clear, running back to the Brazilian again. Now Busquets. Real Madrid really should be level at 2 2. Wonderful chance for Benzema. He did score in the week against Victoria Pilsen, but he's had a long run without a La Liga goal. When you're in form in and around the opposition's goal, as the man alongside me knows very well from his own playing career, those are put away. When you're lacking confidence, we saw what we saw. You should absolutely hit the target force anything miraculous out of Ter Stegen, who would have had to be miraculous to keep at a close-range header the position Benzema was in. Will they get a better chance Real Madrid before the day is out? Here's Suarez to Sergio Roberto. Only Suarez and Coutinho in the penalty area. You know, Suarez has his pocket picked easily by Kroos. Yeah, he can't afford that, allow that to happen, Suarez. Coutinho gives the ball away cheaply at times. Suarez guilty of that when he becomes tired. Real Madrid are enjoying possession. They want possession. Tony Kroos. Lots to his left. And offside. It really shouldn't have been. Benzema is looking across the line there. That's, that's poor play, isn't it? Whether whatever position he's playing in as a centre forward over the years that's his trade isn't it making sure you're looking across the line beating an offside trap even if you're in a wide position you imagine Lopetegui must be considering the lack of confidence seen by Benzema that Mariano Diaz is has to be a possibility as a change good work there by Casemiro and that wasn't a bad pass at all by Isco he just got a little flat footed there Benzema didn't read it quickly enough. I see Barcelona getting another change ready. Well, more football coming up on 11 Sports later. Inform Alaves hosting Villarreal on 11 Sports 1. Should be a really interesting game. And in Serie A, you can watch uh, Napoli hosting Roma, 11 Sports 2, for that match tonight from 7.20. There's a reprieve there, isn't it? Casemiro takes the gamble again ahead of Suarez on the, the goal kick. And referee seeing a foul. Here's Modric, had a quiet game. Isco trying to link with Marcelo, who hooks in a good enough cross in the position he was in, but it was always going to be favouring Ter Stegen. Almost as if everybody's pausing for a deep intake of breath now and wondering 
what's coming next. A mistake from Jordi Alba, that's what arrived. And it's not punished. Semedo. I think the stumble helped him there. <laughs> He'll tell you he meant that. What oh, a lovely run, and the flag stays down. And Sergio Roberto just didn't quite have the pace to get on the end of that. It's a lovely run and a very good pass. Well, that's the space, isn't it? Samaria did really well, and the obvious space there to play the ball into. A, maybe we're seeing Dembele coming on there, and that, that sort of pass, that sort of space. You can understand why Valverde is trying to get Dembele on there. The space is going to be there as Real Madrid had to throw everything forward. Madrid will make that change now. And it's Coutinho who's coming off. Scorer of the first goal in this 177th La Liga Clasico. <laughs> to make way for a Clasico debut. He was injured last season when the Clasicos were played. Usman Dembele. His second season now ruined the first by injuries. The 21 year old is on. Fair to say he hasn't got the total confidence of Valverde up to now. He's still searching to get the right mentality, the right uh, tactical nous to play on a regular basis in this team. Didn't help his cause that apparently he's 25 minutes late turning up for the midweek Champions League game against Inter, which wouldn't have gone down too well with Valverde. But the qualities that he has, pace to burn and immediately stretches his legs and picks out the pass here and Barcelona have Real Madrid stretched to very good effect it's a wonderful header from Luis Suarez well Real Madrid have looked several times looking like they were going to get redemption here at the Camp Nou but Barcelona have restored their two goal advantage Two goals on the day for Luis Suarez, Barcelona three, Real Madrid one. Well, in his absence, absence, it needed Suarez to step up, the experienced striker, then Belly does well, does the simple thing, good attacking play from Barcelona in terms of a 2-1 ahead, getting numbers forward, Tomato's trying to get there, and so Sergio Roberto drills it into Luis Suarez, the power is on the cross, it's only a short cross. Suarez uses the power from the deliveries from Sergi Roberto. And he deflects it. It's almost a deflection. A heavy deflection. Knows exactly the technique needed. And that should. I say should. It's that type of season. Should wrap up the game for Barcelona. Well, he's just become a father for the third time. And life is good and full of smiles for Luis Suarez and Barcelona. neck muscles working to very good effect it was a magnificent header perfectly guided and no chance at all for Courtois that is a considerable blow to the solar plexus for Real Madrid time for a recovery there is a sinking feeling Marco Asensio is going to come on Suarez is going to be shown a card here for the challenge on Nacho not a particularly clever one out from Suarez trying to offer his piece to Nacho who's not interested Freezes there. He does go across his ankle, doesn't he? Yeah, and a little step down from the studs. And that's a real sore one, that for Nacho. Gareth Bale has been replaced by Marco Asensio. Not seen much of Bale today. Didn't see much of Real Madrid at all in the first half as an attacking unit.
Kroos, a risky pass. Rakitic has picked out Sergio Roberto. Courtois will find this in the area he needed. I was going to make the point I, I mentioned earlier about Mariano coming on and maybe replacing Benzema. I think they've been the two biggest disappointments, haven't they, for Real Madrid? Benzema and Bell. Neither have really got themselves involved in the game. Benzema's missed one or, or two chances, but Gareth Bell hasn't really had any effect, any impact on the game. Real Madrid heading for their fifth defeat in the last seven games in all competitions. Which means for this man, Julian Lopetegui, most certain departure from the Bernabeu. I mean, we don't like to talk about a man in his job losing his job, but it's hard to see how he could survive this. There's been talk about Antonio Conte, who is available. Talk about Jose Mourinho coming back to Real Madrid, who isn't available and says he wants to stay at Old Trafford. And talk about Maurizio Pochettino, who's just signed a new five-year contract at Tottenham. And talk that they were ready to sound him out. We know that they wanted Pochettino in the summer, but does he give up a safe job at Tottenham to come to the biggest, probably the biggest hot seat, certainly the hottest of hot seats in world football at the moment for uncertainty? Don't ask me, Kevin, is that next Spurs player, would you swap I know, Spurs I know. for Real Madrid, you know the answer. I know what you would want, but what would you think? <laughs> I, I, I think I'd go for safety. If I, I it's him. a big decision for any manager. We're, we're jumping the gun a bit here because... Lopetegui is still his manager. Yep. He hasn't been helped. It's not all about Lopetegui. I think the attitude of the players isn't great at Real Madrid. I don't think the club have helped him in terms of... Or I think they've hindered the progress of the club in the last two or three transfer windows where they haven't made the necessary signings. Here's Marcelo. Good support from Isco. Vasquez never likely really to trouble Jordi Alba. No, Amber isn't the tallest, but certainly got the better of that far post duel. Now Rakitic in space, lots of it. He can drive towards our Real Madrid penalty area. Ivan Rakitic, Suarez with a cross. He's trying to repay the cross that Sergio Roberto provided for him earlier, but there was no pace on the Roberto header. Yeah, just looking at Marcelo, win forward. I was keeping an eye because he made no attempt to get back, but it looks signalling to the bench that he's not able to continue I was watching us Asensio there as well he's just come on the pitch young player made no attempt to get back and help his teammates or if he did it was a very slow attempt the attitude was poor from the Real Madrid players we're inside the last 10 minutes of normal time Marcelo He's ready to depart. Yeah, just pulled up there when he affected the back heel to Isco. Just felt it. Yeah, his hamstring went. Well, that is certainly in keeping with Real Madrid's woes, isn't it? Mariano Diaz is going to replace him. And that's not just unfortunate for Real Madrid now, but for the coming games, because if that is a, a hamstring, hopefully it's only a strain rather than a tear for Marcelo. What an arena this is, the Camp Nou. It's been an absolute privilege to be here today. Mariano Diaz brought back to Real Madrid after a very good season in France with Lyon. He got over 20 goals last season. Real Madrid spent over 30 million euro to bring him back. Benzema, he's done well to find the space, sets up the shooting opportunity. Asensio unable to trouble the target, capable from there though. It's, it's a unique atmosphere in the, the Classico, in Classico, because... There's about 200 Real Madrid supporters in the stadium, is he? Oh, mistake here by Ramos, and Suarez is in for a hat-trick! No mistake! The 25th hat-trick in Classic! 
Mexico history goes to Luis Suarez. Game over. <laughs> and what a super finish as well. Second half for Real Madrid. Didn't look as if they had any chance of getting back into it. Marcelo gets the goal. It almost looked inevitable that Real Madrid were going to get the equaliser. They didn't make the most of their dominance at that time. And Barcelona have got regrouped and have found real form back in front of goal. And of course, it has to be Luis Suarez. I talked about in the absence of Messi. And he's done everything you require of a striker. He's been aggressive. He's chased lost causes. And most importantly, finished any chance that has come his way. Super performance from Luis Suarez. Back to his best and back to the top of the table, Barcelona. Barca made a change. Artur replaced by Arturo Vidal, who comes on for his Clásico debut. The Chilean international. Just listen to the noise now at the Camp Nou. Salt being rubbed into gaping Real Madrid wounds. They more than suggested they could actually turn around this Clasico, didn't they, in the first 15, 18 minutes of the second half? Oh, they should have been. I mean, they were lucky when Modric strikes the post. There was other chances. Benzema's been guilty, missing a couple of opportunities. It was dreadful play from Barcelona. It was an invitation to Real Madrid to get back into the game. But aren't we just looking at the lack of consistency? And let's, and let's bring both teams into this. I mean, Barcelona have been excellent at times in this game in terms of an attacking unit. Defensively, those frailties are there to be seen. That could prove costly when it comes to handing out trophies as the season develops. But uh, Real Madrid, from one moment to the next, you just don't know what you're going to see. I'm sure the players are thinking that to themselves down there. This is a group of players who've been playing with one another for an awful long time. It's not like a, a collection has suddenly been thrown together. That's what makes it all the more remarkable. Here's Asensio's cross, easy clearance for Longley. Well, the repertoire of victory songs ringing around the camp now. That's, that's the point I was making, Kevin. Supporters around the world, these are unique because, as I said, there's about 200, if that, away supporters. That's at the camp now, it's when you go to the Bernabeu. It's not the same as when you, you know, you, you do get derby matches and big matches around the rest of Europe. It's exclusively, so if you're, the pressure is so much on Barcelona, and if you're the home team, and for Real Madrid in these circumstances, it's 99% at this stadium. I thoroughly enjoying what it now, currently, is turning into be an embarrassing defeat for Real Madrid. Here's Suarez, who scored the 12th Barcelona hat-trick in Clásico history. They're not about to declare at four, it would seem. Semedo, every pass, every move, being cheered to the rafters here. Tapas bars are going to be busy around this region of Barcelona in the hours after this game. And those journalists and broadcasters who support Barcelona are even clapping and cheering every pass around us in our commentary position here. This is Dembele. Oh, it must be! It is! sunk and sunk many fathoms below safety for Lopetegui below safety for these celebrated players there is nowhere to hide it's a whitewash for the team in white and a day to remember for those with an allegiance to Barcelona incredible scenes Kevin 
totally embarrassing for Real Madrid. Excellent play from Barcelona. Enjoying the keep ball session. Getting the ball up wide to Dembele. He beats the defender far too easy. Lovely little chip in towards the, the six-yard box. Courtois must be thinking, what on earth has happened to the Real Madrid that he thought he was joining? That's too easy to beat Nacho. Vasquez too late. Vidal unmarked. Six yards out. Five goals for Barcelona. Well, Terry, it takes me back to 2010 and that 5-0 win for Barcelona under Pep Guardiola here. It's not been anywhere near that level of performance from Barcelona that we saw that day. A performance you said was the best club performance you'd ever, ever seen. And I think that still stands to this day. But there are parallels, aren't they? Certainly in terms of the scoreline we're looking at. It certainly is, and I didn't expect it when we saw the, the proceedings at the beginning of the second half when Real Madrid got the goal right back in it. Probably should have been level. I wouldn't say it was fair in terms of the, the state of the game, the way the game had panned out, because Barcelona should have been two, three, four ahead by half time. They should have increased their lead to what they had. But the way it's, it's had a, a flow to it, isn't it, in the second half when you think Real Madrid on the verge of getting back on level terms, Barcelona breaking away, wasteful on the counter attacks, but eventually begin to make them count. And this, the supporters don't want it to stop at five. Well, there's players in the build-up to this Clásico of Real Madrid who prepared to put their head above the parapet, said they believed in the coach, they wanted to play for the coach. You've hardly have known it today. The attitude has been terrible, and Suarez nearly had another. Denied by Courtois from point-blank range. They are carving Real Madrid wide open time and time again here. Benzema is onside, Mariano was free in the middle, Benzema couldn't get his pass away. We're heading towards stoppage time. I've got to ask you, Terry, where do Real Madrid turn here? I think we know in terms of the coach, but here, offside. And look who it was getting forward for Barcelona, the right-back Semedo. I mean, Lopetegui... I've oh, done. Yeah, done. He's done, he can't He can't survive this, no. so where do they turn off the pitch and where do the players turn for morale oh. and they need leadership oh, no, no, like they've never needed it before? Yeah, but they have to show leadership, Yeah, you know, it's all well and good, you can't every... When you play for Real Madrid, you've reached a certain level, talent-wise, mentality-wise, you can't rely, continue to rely on other people to boost your morale, to raise your game. This is nowhere near good enough for Real Madrid. Here's Suarez. The full-time whistle cannot come soon enough for these beleaguered Real Madrid players. Their worst league run, joint record worst run in La Liga for 19 years. Mariano's worked that nicely. Benzema can't find the consolation. Florentino Perez has the decision to make. Well, it's a good give and go, isn't it? Again, Benzema missed. Let's not forget, this is a team that's won the last three Champions Leagues. And we've seen them being ripped apart and the form that they're being shown. So this is drastic. It's a massive story in the world of football, European football. For Real Madrid to be so poor, it's incredible. And the fallout on the shoulders of Real Madrid will be considerable in the coming days. Every time they go forward in this second half, they look like no scoring. Resistance. No resistance whatsoever. They've thrown the towel in, had a good go at the start of the second half, but once Suarez got the third, they've just completely thrown the towel in. Nine classical goals now for Luis Suarez since he made his debut in the 2014-15 season. We had six goals, we could have had ten. Both sides have hit the woodwork in this second half. But it was that crucial period when Modric hit the inside of a post and Benzema put a free header from close range over the top. No question that Barcelona deserved to win. And probably by the scoreline and the margin they did in the end, 
because Real Madrid, but for the first 15 minutes of the second half, simply didn't turn up here. They've deserved to be on the end of a spanking. Surely the end for Lopetegui. Where do Real Madrid go from here? That's all for the hours and the days to come. Barcelona, we know where they're going, back to the top of the table in front of a delighted sellout crowd at the Camp Nou. And it is Luis Suarez with a hat-trick. A really well-taken hat-trick it was too, after Philip Coutinho put them in front. It was even a late goal for Arturo Vidal off the substitutes bench. A single Real Madrid goal from Marcelo that got them back into it at one stage to that one and only good period in the early minutes of the second half. Luis Suarez will be going home with a match ball to show to his new baby, to his delighted family, no doubt. And there it is in the hands of the Uruguayan. The Barcelona anthem rings around the Camp Nou. It's been a five-star performance in the end, not always consistent, but it will go down in the history books as a thrashing, a classico thrashing. They send Real Madrid home with their tails firmly between their legs. And it is finished here at the camp now. Barcelona 5, Real Madrid 1 on 11 sports.